So I call this my Fortress of Solitude. And I painted this building, this outbuilding. It's really a garage, but outbuilding. Had it painted white and had this golden door put on, much like the Fortress of Solitude. So let's take a look inside. And you can see lots and lots and lots of comic books. This is my comic book hoard, or comic book warehouse. This is actually only about half of the comics that I have, believe it or not. And I know for a lot of people this is probably crazy, absurd. Just can't even comprehend how anybody got this many comic books. So, uh, I guess just to explain that, I am, I consider myself a dealer. I did not pay uh, retail for hardly any of the comics that I own. Uh, I buy collections, I buy a lot of private collections, but I've also bought overstock from shops. So I've uh, I bought a lot of overstock, um, I bought hundreds of boxes from multiple different shops, and this is what I've ended up with. I've also bought a lot of private collections too. You know, it's it's a lot of comics I bought over a long period of time from a lot of different sources over three years. And now we are moving and we are moving to a house that actually uh, does have uh, more space. It's a bigger house, but it is, uh, even though it's a, it's a bigger house, it has less storage space. So because of that, that means that I have to get rid of these comics. So at this house, this is the garage. It's a detached garage. I bought this house for the purpose of using it as a warehouse, and that's what it's been. You can see it's actually pretty cool. It's got these big steel uh, garters here, uh, and I actually had a new roof put on when I bought the house, which cost me way, way more than I was expecting to spend. I spent about 10 grand to have this stupid roof put on. So, you know, I've, I've used this as a warehouse, but the house that we are buying now, uh, it has, you know, an attached garage, a normal garage that we're going to use as a garage. Also there, the basement is finished. So long term, I would like to use it as, uh, you know, as a family room or something like that. Um, it's half finished and half unfinished. So, you know, I'll still have some comic storage. And again, this is only half of my, my hoard, actually. I've, I've actually got a total of about 220,000 comics. I actually used to have even more. I used to have about a quarter million comic books, so about a thousand long boxes worth of comics. And I sold, uh, I sold 70 long boxes back in the spring. And now I'm needing to sell really everything that you're seeing. Uh, I need to do a bulk sale basically for this amount of comics. Now again, I have a basement full as well, so it's about double of what you're seeing here. But as far as what I have prepared so far, these boxes here that you're seeing on this pallet right here, this is what I have prepared for my, uh, my bulk sale. So I have a buyer who he actually repacks and sells these in, in retail stores. Um, so he just wants any comics. He said, you can give me a thousand or a million of the same copy because uh, it just gets mixed in with other comics, other collections he's buying from other places, and he resells them. Typically, I, uh, I've sold to him before. I've sold only DC and Marvel to him, uh, and he's paid up to $60 a box for that. In this instance, because uh, I have a lot of indie, probably about half of this is independent, so that brings the value way down. And for on those boxes, I've, I've paid as low as $10 a box for, for indie. Uh, that's not the norm typically, you know. It could be, it could be a bit higher. Um, but because of all the indie mixed in, I am uh, accepting $45 a long box. So everything that I'm trying to set aside and sell from all of this, I'm going to sell for $45 per box. So uh, that's how the comic book dealing market works for anybody that's interested. You know, it, the, the prices can fluctuate. Again, 10 is like the extreme low uh, for all independent. 
Um, you know, historically, I think $25 per long box has been the norm. You know, with inflation and whatnot, it's probably closer to 50 now. Um, but, you know, I've, I've paid up to, de depending on, on what the bulk is, you know, I've paid 75 bucks for normal bulk. It's probably been the upper limits. You know, and for, for Bronze Age or Silver Age stuff, you pay way more because, um, you know, that stuff's way more valuable. So you can pay $150 a box. Actually, you know what? I did pay, I think I paid $100 per long box one time when I went to the mall and there was a place there and they had a lot of cool comics and it was all modern, but it was stuff I wanted. So I, I've paid $100 per long box for, for bulk. Anyway, uh, I just thought I'd give you some insight as to the kinds of stuff. I, I have everything, right? It, most of this is modern stuff. Um, you know, there's, there's, there's just a little bit of everything, right? There's uh, all kinds of different... Spider-Man, Avengers, Mad Max, it's just any kind of title you can think of. Now, I, I think probably a lot of people would wonder, why would you buy from, from shops, right? Because that's already been cherry-picked. Well, when you're buying hundreds of boxes, you know, you, you get stuff like Static Number 1s, for example. I have found, this is just a couple that I just found right now, but I found stacks of the, uh, the, the sealed copy of this. Um, these have been unbagged, but the the bagged copies I found huge stacks coming from dealers because the shops, you know, they bought it back in the '90s or whatever, um, or prior to when it was really valuable, and now it's uh, you know now it is valuable or authority number one or just you know there's all kinds of of uh, modern keys, so there's that. Um, as far as crap that I'm getting rid of. Uh, one series that I've come across so much of is this Sable or John Sable. There's just so much of this. Just boxes and boxes. John Sable. Uh, also, you know, lots of, uh, well, I can show you, like, stuff like this. This is all crap I'm getting rid of. I guess you probably are interested in kind of the stuff I'm, I don't want. You know, it's a lot of the image, a lot of Malibu, like that right here, right? All this image Malibu crap. This isn't like no nobody collects this. Nobody wants this. And there's tons of it. Uh, Valiant also. There's tons and tons of Valiant. I was actually kind of amazed because I set aside a uh, a Magnus number one, and then went to uh, went to go list it, and it was only <laughs> selling for like three dollars. So uh, Valiant has pretty much completely crashed. Even the keys. Um, and then I have a lot of these packs too. These are just packs of like the same issue of, of Spider-Man, for example. Uh, I kind of was hesitant to sell these you know, Spider-Mans because he's really popular, but you see it's just like from these shops, they just have overstock of these individual issues. So I have a lot of different just packs like that. So this is what I'm setting aside to sell. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a lot of garbage. Um, the other side of this that you may find interesting, and also like kind of just lower condition stuff, like stuff that's really not in good shape. That like there's probably some older Daredevils here, but they're just like you know, it's just not in good shape at all. Even though it's a newsstand, even though it's older, I need the space. So, and I also don't want to physically move all this crap too. So uh, again, the other side of this is it is December twentieth now. I basically have to get this done. Um, you know, by the 23rd of December so I can do Christmas stuff because we're moving on December 29th and 30th that weekend. So I am going to have to go through all of my comic books the next four days. So uh, let's see, folks. Let's see on this episode of Hoarders <laughs> if I'm able to go through my comic book hoard and how much I'm able to let go. It'll be interesting to find out. Currently, I'm up to about 40 boxes or so. So... Let's see, uh, out of my, I'm estimating I have about 880 boxes, roughly, long boxes. So, let's say I have 40 out of 880. I have about 4.5%. That's about 4.5% of my hoard right there. So, let's see what percentage of my hoard I'm able to get rid of in four days. So like I said, in addition to the garage, I have a basement full of comics, so here we are down here. This is my basement, and this is a really cool reason why I bought 
the house. One of the reasons why is because it has this room. I call it the vault. So it's like, see, it's a separate room. It's under my porch, actually. And uh, I have some figures and stuff up on top of these file cabinets, but for the most part, um, and I had to have some boxes of comics up there. I actually was going through those too. But see, I have these file cabinets here. And then I have all the sorted issues of the comic that I have. So here's my Action Comics collection. I do have a few other issues that are in safes because they're so valuable. But like here's issue 280 onwards of Action Comics. So, yeah. There's Bronze Age and Silver Age, and then it goes to Copper, and then I have a pretty much full run from 500 to 1000. So, uh, yeah, I have uh, <coughs> I have these file cabinets, and that's a really cool system. And see, I have a lot of the older issues in these um, top loaders. But basically, the way my system works is that I have, you know, in these file cabinets, um, everything that I have in CLZ, CLZ app. So everything here is kind of categorized and graded and like I, every single issue in these file cabinets, every single one is, I've, I've looked at it, I've put it into CLZ, I know the grade, it's inventoried. Everything else is not. <laughs> <laughs> um, actually over there is what I have on eBay so those are but um, as far as all this and all this these are just kind of sorted you know I had kind of a system here where purple was independent uh, green was image red was Marvel blue was DC and I think I had yellow for Archie actually these are kind of cool so I'll show you this is Archie bronze envelopes. These are envelopes that apparently were mailed to a school. Um, let's just take one out. So it's an envelope. See, it's it was being mailed to somebody in in uh, New Milford, and then if you open it up, it's kind of hard to do one-handed. If you were to open up, it's three issues, it's three of, sorry, four of the same issue of Archie Comics. Of This is Little Archie. But there's a bunch of different Archie series, and I, I have, you know, boxes of those. So anyway, uh, Yellow was, I think it was actually like older independent. See here I have, well that's Archie too there. So anyway, basically, what you're seeing here is going to explain my madness, <laughs> my hoarding madness. So again, in the vault is everything that's in CLZ. That's like kind of like my collection, basically, in a way. My my that is like my inventoried collection. Currently, I've gone through all these. So these are all things that I'm keeping. They're they're somewhat sorted to a certain degree. Um, so like see here bronze age mostly defenders so these are all Defenders comics for the most part on this side They're, these are like sorted So these are really well sorted, but then I just threw in like some other random crap that I have that's bronze age um, so well, some silver age too. That's actually silver age But these are all things that I have already looked through and I'm keeping these. Um, I still actually have to go through those short boxes there. They're kind of behind the other pallet, but um, let's just say for the most part, this is all what I'm keeping. So inside the vault, this. Again, this is my eBay inventory here. These I still need to go through. And over here, yes, <laughs> there's more. <laughs> this is this is more so over here is my spider-man pile that's all spider-man and then here is all stuff that i have sorted over the last two years but i uh, need to go through again i'm currently also going through this and then i also have some short boxes back here so Again, as you can see, uh, I have a lot of comic books. Um, again, by my estimation, 
um, just based on how many long boxes and short boxes I had and guessing that you know short box I believe is about 150 comics and a long box is about uh, 250 um, that I had at one point about a quarter million and I've been dealing again as I mentioned I sold all the big key issues that I had I had werewolf by night 32 uh, I had the first Ant-Man uh, and first Ghost Rider all, all the early amazing Spider-Mans um, besides issue one uh, I just I, I had a ton of, of big key books that I sold and this is what I'm currently going through and I'm still finding stuff right like and especially modern stuff as you, you, you can tell and you'd guess I have a lot of modern um, I do have a lot of bronze so this is all Bronze Age comics from Bronze Collections that I got. What if there? I saw number one something. Oh, Black Black Panther? No, what was it? It's packed kind of tightly, so I can't really tell. But these are all Bronze Age Marvel in this box. Some of them are better condition than others. You can tell because they're they're from different collections. That's why, right? So like this stuff here is from a probably different collection than this. So. I have a lot to go through, um, and I'm trying to currently figure out how much of this to also throw into that bulk deal. Obviously, I don't want to throw in the bronze or the silver. See, like, look, this is all Bronze Age Marvel. Uh, so unless that's, like, in really bad condition, <laughs> you know, unless that's, like, destroyed, I don't want to include it. So you have Dell Comics, too. There's a lot of, actually... Um, keys from from Dell in the Silver Age you'd be surprised they put out a lot of books um, so there's just you know a lot of Disney stuff in here um, but these are all books that I want to sell in individually um, I don't want to I don't want to uh, throw them into any kind of bulk deal because um, that's you know that's why I purchased these for the most part was to sell them to list them or otherwise uh, to sell them and then you know too also there's there's a certain degree of um, you know I'm a comic book reader I've read and enjoyed comic books since I was six years old so you know I, I just don't really want to um, you know I don't I don't want to get rid of stuff <laughs> that's why I kind of called myself a hoarder you know it's it's somewhat joking but um, you know it's it's kind of true it's kind of true because it's very hard for me going through this stuff so, I know there's a there's an ASM box here. That's another thing too, right? <laughs> when you have this many, you kind of lose track of even uh, where certain boxes are. So it's too it's too much, you know. Even if I wasn't moving, um, I would acknowledge that this is just way too much inventory. It's way more comics than I could ever read in my lifetime. Way more than, um, you know, I'd be able to list and sell. So see, there's some blue, where I said blue was DC. So this is all Bronze Age DC here. So, you know, it's stuff I enjoy and I like, and I, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to, to read every single one <laughs> if I had the time, but I just really don't even have the time. So, um, Again, even if I wasn't moving, I'd have to do some kind of bulk sale like this because I really just don't even have a choice because this is what happens when you are a hoarder. <laughs> um, so, again, I'm kind of going through currently just seeing what I can get rid of. This is, I'm trying to sell my, um, like for this bulk sale, I'm trying to give them like my, my most beat up boxes so I have the better ones. But for example here, let's turn this around. <laughs> So this is my Web of Spider-Man box. So here's just, you know, it's like a full run basically of, I'm sure it is. Let's see, do I have one in here? No, I don't have two. There's no ones in here. I probably pulled them all. That's what I've done in selling too, is, is right, like if I've seen a key, I've sold it. Or um, a lot of these collections too, honestly, especially that I bought from dealers, it's been all the filler. They pulled the keys already. Um, so anyway, like here's a box of, like that I was sorting this is all my web of spider-man you see here like all here's a bunch of issue three and then so I got to go through this figure out which of these I want to keep and which I want to get rid of right like 
this issue, for example, I have so many copies of that, I don't need it. So, it's gonna just be, uh, it's been a little bit of a process for me to say, I don't need this stuff, I have enough of it. Or, um, maybe I don't even want it at all. There's a bunch of maximum carnage issues. Maybe I don't even want it at all because it's just not valuable. This was actually one of the first uh, Spider-Man comics I ever read. This one, Web of Spider-Man 105. I, re I remember when I was a kid, I mostly read Superman. And I actually did have, I think the first comic I ever had actually was the Ren and Stimpy uh, Powder Toast Man issue. Um, that was actually Dan Slott's first comic. I think that was the first one that, that I ever owned. And then um, I had... I picked up in Superman in the the end of the reign of Superman. So the reign of the Superman, like the very end of that, um, like right before Superman comes back, which was very, very confusing. But it was really cool. It was exciting, but it was very confusing. And then I also had this issue of Web of Spider-Man. So this is October of 93. So I would have been seven years old when this came out. So anyway, uh, yeah, I've been reading comics. Whoops. Got to figure out where that goes exactly. But I've been reading comics since I was uh, six years old. And uh, yeah, let me see if I can find that very first comic I ever had. Here it is. I found it. So it's Ren and Stimpy number six. And this is from May 1992, I believe. It would have to be 1992. Uh, this was, you know, not this copy, but this um, comic book was the first comic I read. Oh, May 93. So, I guess it was I was seven when I became a comic book collector. But anyway, this was, uh, yeah, this was a really cool issue. Again, Dan Slott, I believe this is Dan Slott's first comic book ever. And I just thought it was cool because I knew who Spider-Man was. And uh, I was an avid viewer of Ren and Stimpy, so I thought this was a really cool crossover. So, that's the comic that started this. <laughs> <laughs> from this <laughs> to a quarter million books. So, um, anyway, as I mentioned, I have uh, not very much time. I only have a few days, um, especially with Christmas, to go through all this stuff and uh, figure out what the heck I'm doing. Because it's, uh, it's a lot. It's just a lot. And uh, I think I may go insane trying to do this, so let's see how it goes. <laughs> All right, folks, so here we are on Wednesday, December 20th, and this is what I have so far today. Uh, this is 45 boxes, so still just about just about 5% of the way, assuming that I have 880. I think a lot of people would probably say, you know, why is this even... So here's a here's a one for example, Cyforce 28 newsstand. That's probably not worth anything, but you know it's issue 28 and it's a newsstand. So there's that. Oh look, just found another static number one. See what I'm saying? The stuff's like just in, <laughs> just all over the place. One of the shop, at least one, if not a couple of the shops that I bought from, they just did not pull a static number one out at all. Um, so anyway, you know, just been struggling with this a bit, trying to figure out what I'm, what I should be selling, what I should not be selling, and uh, yeah, it's just it's it's difficult. I imagine a lot of people watching <clears throat> would just be saying, well, a <laughs> they'd be trying to comprehend the situation. <laughs> Why would any person even ever try to accumulate this many comics? You know, really, I was just kind of trying to do a Chuck Rosansky, just buy from everybody I possibly could and uh, make money off of them and you know again I, I had a really good year in 2022 um, a big part of that was selling all the keys that I mentioned this, this one's backwards but uh, you know I've, I've sold a lot of smaller books too and you know my thought process was just buy as many comics as you can uh, and there'll be keys in there and you can sell them and you can sell the dollar books too and you're buying everything for 10 cents and you know it should be should be good everything should go great but um again i wasn't really expecting that we were going to be moving this year and it's really my decision honestly i just i don't want to live in this town anymore um when we first moved here 
I was told it was a nice quiet town and it's really not it's a uh, it's a very loud town actually believe it or not <laughs> and our house is loud and it's just uh, you know it's it's not a fun place to live really so that's it's really my decision um, you know there's other life events like my wife happened to get pregnant this year but honestly I had decided before we even found out that she was pregnant that uh, we were going to move, so it, that really didn't didn't impact it much. So, um, yeah, I'm just uh, I'm just kind of going through this now and trying to figure out what I should be selling, what I should be keeping, and it's very hard. So, okay, guys, it's 24 hours later. Didn't I do a lot of work? Yep, I got one more box than yesterday. So it's been 24 hours. I have one box. Yesterday was terrible. I uh, really had a hard time uh, physically, mentally. I was just exhausted. And uh, I also had a bunch of stuff going on. I had meetings for work. My dad showed up to um, pick up a swing set to bring to his house since the house we're buying has a playscape already. So, uh, and then I went to bed early so I could get a good start on today. And then at midnight, the power went out and the power has been out for, well, was out for the last 12 hours. It just came back on finally. So now I can finally start <laughs> to do this again. And uh, so now I'm back at it. And we're going to see how it goes again. Um, again, this is Thursday the 21st now. It's the first day of winter. And I've made, you know, really not much progress at all still. I still need to go through all this crap over here. I need to go through this. Work my way around over there. Again, those stacks there is what I had set aside to save. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of wondering if that's even feasible or plausible. Um, there's another stack over here. I don't know if you guys saw that. There's one in that corner there. So I don't know if it's at all possible to go through all these comics in six days. Uh, I think I'm probably just going to get over it at a certain point <laughs> and just start throwing crap in there. You know what else I was thinking about, too? I don't know if you guys noticed this, but this is pretty cool, isn't it? This is something I picked up. I don't know where I'm going to put this in my new house. I don't know if this is going to end up in my attic or what, but um, I'm definitely taking this thing with me. It's really cool. Because these are like uh, these are like metal axes. It's like solid metal. So, uh, anyway, um, and I got some cool masks over there. Kind of remind me of, uh, of Jack Kirby a little bit. So, yeah, and I still got to just, you know, do all my normal packing for non-comic book things that I own. Um, plus, I have to empty out those file cabinets I showed you. So, again, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Also, uh, this is kind of cool. Hopefully, an animal doesn't jump out of me. <laughs> uh, I know nothing about cards. Um, at all, but when you buy comic books, I can't even open this. When you buy comics, you end up with lots of cards too. Those look like sports, but um, I have tons and tons of trading cards in here. Star Wars and just I don't I don't even know what the hell some of this stuff is. I haven't even looked at it at all. I got these binders of cards. These things really just got thrown into deals um, when I was buying comics. It's like look at this DC Legends number one, the first appearance of Amanda Waller. And uh, this was a key for a while. It heated up. I think it has gone down a bit now, but it's still like a $5 book on eBay. Look at all these copies. And I actually have in the house, I have another stack of these already. But here's, and these are like, some of these are multiple in the same, the same bag. Just like, you know, a ton. Look, here's a giant, here's a giant. It's, it's all, it's all the same thing. I actually have in the house too, I forgot about it, a long box that's just two issues of Frank Miller Daredevil. Uh, you know, it's kind of later in his run, so it's not that not that like, valuable. But, um, you know, again, it's just, how do you, how do you sell this for, and I'm not going to, but, you know, let's just say like I just was not looking through the boxes because I ran out of time, which could happen here because I have very limited time left and still... Still trying to make progress. But how do you just give the, up a $5 book, a stack of $5 books for 18 cents each? You know, it's just throwing money away. So I'm trying not to do that. Anybody need a copy of Bloodshot Zero? There's a huge stack here. Uh, one comic that I already came across, like dozens and dozens of that I already got rid of before uh, was Turok number one. 
just another Valiant chromium cover like the like these here. And you know, it's funny in buying private collections because I come across so much of this stuff and the people who aren't really collectors, like there's one lady who got her ex-husband's comic collection and she had just boxes of this kind of crap and you know, wildcats and all this stuff and like these shiny these shiny covers and they're in the bags and boards and they're in near mint condition. You know, and people think that it's worth a fortune because it's a 30 year old comic and it's shiny and looks special and it's it's in a bag and a board and it looks in perfect shape like it's right off the newsstand. Like you don't understand <laughs> there are millions of these things and people like me and comic shops around the country have basements full of this crap. So it's completely worthless, unfortunately. Uh, will I put this in there? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question though, isn't it? There's actually even more than I thought. There's these packs of them. There's more here. There's just so many of these freaking things. So yes, yes, I am getting rid of these. They're going away. Alright, it is 11.20 a.m. on Friday, December 22nd. And I'm currently up to 56 boxes. So... Uh, some of these are from last night. I stayed up late last night in the house and I'm still only up to 56. I'm currently just trying to clear off this shelf here. Um, I was working away here. I don't know if I was there last time, but clearing off these shelves. I just had a spill where I was uh, using a hand truck to bring a bunch of these short boxes into the house and of course hit a bump and they all spilled all over the ground. So. I actually had that happen before when uh, buying collections, like taking a turn, like running down a ramp <laughs> from a truck and taking a turn too hard. And because, you know, these boxes are always like, these the boxes that people put into bulk sales are always screwed up and taped together and everything. So the, uh, the flap on it, the taped together flap just like ripped as I was making the turn and the comics spilled all over the yard, so. That was fun. So you can tell I'm a little out of breath. I'm just, I feel kind of stressed out at this point. I'm running out of time. I can't really go through this stuff the way I want to. And I'm just coming to that realization. Uh, again, I only really have five days. And I don't even have that time really because I'm gonna be so busy. So I basically have some time today, some time tomorrow, some time Sunday. And then I'm hoping I can spend all day Tuesday on this, but I just, uh, I don't know how I'm going to get to the numbers I was hoping to get to because again, I'm only at 56. 56 divided by 880. So I'm still only at 6% <laughs> of my total collection. So this is just, uh, I just got to just start throwing books in without even, you know, really caring what they are almost because uh, otherwise I don't know how I'm going to do this. Here's another one. It's a ton of Wonder Woman number ones here. A pack full of them. So I'm talking about like th this came from a shop, right? This was overstock from a shop. And they threw in <laughs> packs of Wonder Woman number one. That's like a full run of Wonder Woman with all the minor keys, I'm sure. Yeah. It's crazy. Crazy how they, they wouldn't do this work before that I'm doing now. They wouldn't do that before selling it. I mean, it is a lot of work, but still, come on. What are we doing here? They're just a spawn number one. Not really in great shape, you know, probably like a seven maybe, but still, spawn number one, just sitting here cruising around in one of these boxes, one with a bunch of Batmans. You know what else I haven't really been showing is um, I actually have a lot of these like special um, like dynamic forces and stuff and like special edition stuff. Let's see if I can find somewhere. Like tons of these, um, you know, all independent stuff really, but just lots of these like I don't know special edition like let's see dynamic forces like, like black and white stuff. So this is another thing I guess shops just get a ton of somehow and. Or, you know, again, I just uh, happened to get them in this bulk sale because they weren't looking through their stuff, maybe. Here it is. 
I have had stacks and stacks of this book that I've already gotten rid of. This is probably the most overprinted comic in history. Please, for the love of God, people, <laughs> do not invest in this comic. Because this comic is, uh, it's worthless. It's completely, completely worthless. On the one hand, these things make it really easy <laughs> to get this job done. <laughs> it's like, oh, here's a freaking stack of crap. Another uh, series that I just have so much of is uh, Sable and John Sable Freelance. Uh, I've never read this, so I don't know like who this character is, but dear God, there's so much of it. There's just like mountains in here. Um, apparently there are a few keys. I just, uh, I pulled this one because I thought it was a crazy cover. He's fighting Nazis in front of the World Trade Center. So that was pretty crazy. Uh, and this is the last issue of Sable, I think. Um, but from the Sable series, I guess this is uh, one key. And then from the John Sable Freelance, uh, issue number one, and then issue number 11. Um, I guess are minor keys, but you know, nothing's really all that valuable. But uh, yeah, there's so, so much of this series that, you know, I never, I never read, I never really heard of before uh, buying these collections like this. So it's a, uh, it's plentiful. There's a lot out there. Okay, folks, it is 1030 on Saturday, December 23rd, two days before Christmas. And here is what I currently have set aside. It's 69 boxes. That is not a joke. 69 boxes. So, again, if uh, we're going to multiply that by 250 and assume that there's 250 in each box, then that brings us to... 17,250 comics right there. So, still, uh, you know, still a decent amount. Uh, almost, almost up to 10% of my total collection, at least as, uh, as I'm assuming it is. So, still going through all this. I'm currently on the back wall here. This is what I'm doing right now. And still just plugging away. Uh, the longer you do this for, <laughs> the uh, the more willing you are to let stuff go, I found. Um, I mean, I'm up against a time limit, obviously, too, as I've mentioned a few times. But besides that, it's just, uh, it's really daunting. It's tiresome. And uh, look, I even cut my thumb here just a few minutes ago. So I've been bleeding over the comics, too, as I'm going through them. So that's great. But uh, yeah, uh, the more you, the more you're doing it, just like the, I'm, I'm, you know, <laughs> it's the weekend of Christmas, and I'm out here in the freezing cold. This is not a heated garage, by the way, so it's like uh, 30 degrees out here. Like I'm working in a refrigerator, and uh, yeah, I'm out here sorting comics for this bulk sale. So not a lot of fun. Um, yeah, it just makes you kind of. <laughs> <laughs> reevaluate what the hell you're doing here with your uh, your business model so i can't wait till i'm done i cannot wait till i work my way around here go through all these get over there and we'll see how much we end up with total uh again so far it's it's less than half i'm getting rid of unfortunately that i've that i'm going through you know of of the sorting that i'm doing the uh, proportion that I'm keeping is still more than half. So that's not really that great. But again, 69 boxes, that's something. It's it's halfway decent. It's actually, last time this guy bought for me, he bought 70. So he bought one more box than I have currently set aside here. So we're going to keep adding to it. Have another pallet ready. Let's see how many we can get done today. And... I don't know if I'm doing this on Christmas Eve. That's pretty insane, but I guess we'll see. Merry Christmas, everybody. It is December 25th, Christmas Day, 2023. It's about noon. Uh, we did Christmas morning here with my mom and stepdad, and uh, pretty soon we're going to be leaving to go have Christmas with my dad and stepmother and uh, everybody in that family. But uh, I'm currently up to 80 boxes. Just wanted to uh, have a couple hours free here, so um, you know, kids are sleeping or playing with toys. So I was going to uh, see if I could make any more progress on this again because I only have, I really only have tomorrow <laughs> to finish this. 
Uh, and again, I'm up to 80 boxes, so. Okay, it is December 26th, it is Tuesday. And I am up to 104 boxes. So, made some progress. Finally over the 100 mark. But uh, I still have that corner to go through over there. As you can see, things are just kind of getting messy in here. Um, I'm trying to keep up with it. But it's just, uh, it's a little insanity. All my comics are like, all my boxes of comics are torn apart now. But I am continuing to find some keys, including Bloodstone number one. So happy about that. Uh, I believe I have the first several issues here. So that's two, three. I think I actually found four inside. So pretty sure I have the first four issues. Also Transformers number one. Uh, also Cyber Frog number one. <laughs> found a big stack of number ones, the Cyber Frog. So uh, yeah, pretty pretty happy about what I've been finding. It's just, again, this is really a lot of work. It's uh, It's amazing how much work comic books can be. Um, cause I'm just, I, I'm very diligently trying not to give up books that are valuable and, um, you know, I, I just don't have an encyclopedic knowledge in my head. I started giving up a lot more DC and Marvel, uh, let's see, I have just like runs of Thor and 52 and so, um, Nightwing, there's a bunch of Nightwings, so. A lot more DC and Marvel going into it now. I uh, really don't have any choice, but I'm gonna keep at it today. I have this corner still to work at. I have all these books over here, uh, all these boxes. So still, uh, still a lot of a lot of boxes I can add to it, and uh, I may. I may start going through stuff I've already I already have. I've started going back through boxes that I already went through just because I'm getting less and less. Um, well, I guess I'm getting more and more picky as far as what I'm keeping. So, yeah, this is uh, this is what I got. So we're going to keep at it. And I have today and I have all day tomorrow because the guy said he's going to come on Thursday. The one concern I have now is about um, my lawn because like I said, I'm selling this house and it's a really weird, this is, it's a weird garage. This is an old garage. This house has like three generations to it. So this house was originally built in 1907 then it was redone in like the forties, I think. And that's when this garage is from. Um, and then the guy that the last owner redid it in like two, he did it over time from like 2003 to 20, well, basically 2020. I think he was continuously working on it. Um, anyway, this garage, as you can see, it's a really weird setup. You have to drive around the house and you can't drive over here because this is where the septic tank is. So you have to drive around the house. So I'm a little worried about um, a truck, a big truck tearing up the lawn because uh, like I said, I have to sell this place. So that's another consideration, but for right now, I need to keep focusing on this. I need to add to this 100 boxes. That's good. Again, we're we're uh, you know up around an eighth of my collection now, so that's pretty significant. It's not as much as I need it to be, but uh, I'm pretty happy that I got over 100. It is 9:50 on Wednesday, December 27th. My buyer is coming tomorrow. I am now up to 125 long boxes. So, 125. I'm plugging away still. I'm still trying to add to it. Uh, again, I really initially had thought I was going to get rid of a lot more than this. Um, I, it's just taking so long. I'm basically speeding through boxes now. Just like flying through them, just picking out any little key or cover that I like or run that I'm trying to fill in just very very quickly and it's still taking me forever so this is this corner now <clears throat> as you can see this whole process is a mess especially when you're trying to do it quickly because stuff just gets tossed around and flipped through and it's just really everything is a complete mess right now um, except for these stacks here that I'm that I'm selling 
Uh, these boxes here in the middle of the garage I had set aside to keep, um, but now I'm going to run into a thing where you know I'm trying to uh, I'm trying to get a lot more boxes ready, so I'm going to run out of space even to put them. So now I got to move these inside or just decide to get rid of them or, or something because uh, <laughs> this whole process is just a complete nightmare at this point. Um, I have about 24 hours. So even if I worked nonstop <laughs> without eating or sleeping, uh, I don't know. I don't really know how many more boxes I could I could get. Um, you know, at one point I was averaging one per hour. So I'm hoping I get more than that uh, because I really, really need to. And I'm not going to have the space at my new house. So I'm going to keep plugging away. Um, again, it's just it's it's very hard. But, you know, I'm finding I'm finding cool old stuff. I'm finding Bronze Age books, Silver Age books. This is the first appearance of uh, Bloodshot. You know, I'm finding lots of cool old stuff, so just need to keep at it. You know, this is one from the Bronze Age I see a lot of is Tor number one. Yeah, this one's actually stuck. I, I have this already. I have, I have other boxes with this. They just must have made a ton of these. And, uh, Nobody really collected tour, unfortunately, so. You know what sucks in all the collections I've bought, I have never got ALF 48. Like, you'd figure it'd be such a common key, right? Like, it's just kind of a, a mistake key. It wasn't meant to be a key. But, like, every collection I buy, even if it has ALF in it, it does not have that issue. It's crazy. That and uh, Batman... Uh, Batman Adventures number 12, the first Harley Quinn. Those two modern Copper Age keys, I just, you know, it's crazy. You buy all these comics, <laughs> you figure you'd have at least one of each of those. I've gotten more, uh, you know, more Silver Age, like I'm trying to think of like a... I've, I've come across, for example, two separate issues of Hulk 181. Two different issues. I've gotten an uh, Amazing Spider-Man 129. I've gotten all kinds of keys. I can't get an ALF 48, and I can't get a Batman Adventures 12. It's nuts. Man, I was looking for an Alien Legion number one, and I got one, but look. The stupid tape from this, these graphic novels, it was right in front of it, and it caught on there and ruined this thing. Ah. It had to be number one. It couldn't have been out of the, any of the other ones. It had to be the number one that I did a tape pull on. Alright, it's noon now. I'm up to 132 boxes. Still, uh, you know, just about half of what I wanted to do. But I don't know if I'm going to be able to double this in the next 24 hours. My next uh, challenge here is, as you can see, I'm kind of at the end of the garage here. So I'm going to have to make another row here and that's going to involve moving all that crap that I had set aside to save because there's no room in the house nor do I really want to haul all this crap inside the house so this is my next challenge is figuring out how to create another row here and that's sure going to take up some time which I do not have at all. Something I wish I knew more about was uh, these Jade Man comics, or these uh, sort of Asian style comics. Uh, apparently this one is pretty valuable, um, and I guess these last few issues in this pack are pretty valuable. But, you know, I don't have as good of a knowledge of what is, uh, you know, which ones are valuable and not valuable, so I end up, like, needing to keep all of them. Um, something that also kind of throws me off is the later issues of uh, Valiant Comics. This is Shadow Man. This is like the last, I don't know. It's like 10 of the last 15 issues of Shadow Man, but I guess uh, it doesn't go up to quite the end. Actually, that's a good question. Is 42 the last one here? Now that I think about it, if that's not even the last one. Um, and, you know, that's something people don't talk about much. All right, so I think it's just... Yeah, he just goes up to 42. That's something that people don't talk about a lot either. Um, you know, typically is the final issues of comic book series. Um, because often, the, you know, the first issues often get a lot of attention. Um, 
but the uh, the later issues um, sometimes can be valuable as well. Uh, G.I. Joe, for example, the last few issues of that series are pretty expensive. They they go over $100 raw. So uh, anyway, I guess I just end up holding on to all of these Jade Man comics. There's one that I had a million of that I know is worthless. Uh, it might be issue number one or something, but uh, th and that's the irony too. Is some series, the first issue is worthless because they made so many and then the last issue is valuable because there aren't many at all. So always try to get the last issue of series as well. Well, I have NYX 1, 2, 5, 6, and 7. Not 3 or 4. But I got all the other ones. If you guys want to see exactly how mixed up these boxes are, let me give you an example. So Valiant, Valiant, tons of Valiant. This is Valiant crap, Valiant crap. Oh, it must be a Valiant box. Oh wait, what's this? Oh, John Carter number one. <laughs> so there's some Bronze Age stuff, just mixed in a Kazar number one, a few Kazar number ones. Oh, a bunch of them, yeah. Mixed in with the Valiant garbage. Isn't that hilarious? Oh, and it's like sandwiched in between them. <laughs> sandwiched in between Valiant garbage, some Bronze Age, Bronze Age goodness there. <laughs> Crazy. The other big things besides Valiant are continuity comics from this period. And of course, Image. So many early... 90s image comics. So many of them. And I never, the only thing I really read from this, uh, from this era is Spawn, of course, and Supreme. Those are the two series that I've read. And, uh, some Eclipse. And that's really the only 90s image I read. Oh, there's some more. Berserkers, 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 berserkers. Some Doom Patrol. And Cerebus. I had at least one full box of Cerebus. Yep. Image made a lot of comics. Oh, and so did Continuity. Does it look like she's kissing Swamp Thing? I guess that's not Swamp Thing, but it sure looks like it. You know, speaking of Swamp Thing, there's a lot of debate as to who copied who between Swamp Thing and Man Thing, because they came out around the same time. That's one of those X-Men Doom Patrol things. But there actually was a swamp creature very similar before both of them, named The Heap. It's a Golden Age character, and uh, he had been around for a while. Here he is returning in Airboy, but... You know, it seems as though both Sw Swamp Thing and Man Thing are just ripoffs of the heap. Hey, look, just found a demon number one. That's uh, some cool 1972 Jack Kirby goodness there. Has uh, 8895 right at the top of the first page. Yeah, it's about a four. It's not in great shape, but hey, man, that's a cool key. It is now 8.30 p.m. I am up to 149 boxes. And just uh, still plugging away. I'm trying to go faster. Obviously, it's night now. It's dark. I would prefer to be in bed. But I am a long, long way, long way away from that. Uh, and I keep finding stuff. I keep finding stacks of 80s Uncanny X-Men coming across a lot of really insane independent books but this one's nuts tool but I also just came across a gold uh, variant I was just looking up apparently there's only a thousand of these made so pretty rare oh my god it's Batman Adventures 10 it's Batman Adventures 11 here we go no so it is 2 a.m. now, 
I guess it is two o'clock in the morning and I'm still doing this. And I'm honestly probably gonna be doing this right up until 9 a.m. and not get any sleep. I'm currently at 167 boxes. So that's uh, a little over 41,000. Well, on the plus side, even though I'm uh, running very behind on all this, I did just happen to find a new Alien Legion number one and a bunch of other Alien Legion comics, so. That's good. So folks, it is now five o'clock in the morning. I have stayed up the entire night. The sun will be rising soon if it, if it isn't rising already. Though it's raining, so probably not gonna see it regardless. <coughs> I'm up to 176. Again, my goal is 200. <coughs> I think that's the only realistic goal left, or possible goal left. So if the guy comes in four hours, that means I need to do 24 divided by four, which is six per hour, which is one every 10 minutes. It's 6 a.m. and I'm still finding keys on a Miracle Man number one. So you're never gonna believe this. As I'm freaking out trying to finish this up, uh, just throwing, just throwing comics on there now, just anything, not even looking. The guy just called me and said, because of the rain, because of the rain out there, the pouring rain, I'm probably here. He's not coming today. He's not actually coming till next Tuesday. So, yeah, he's not coming today. So I've stayed up all night for no reason. Isn't that fun? All right, so this is my D-Day. This is January 3rd. The buyer is finally supposed to be coming today. I sure hope he is, because my closing is tomorrow. And sorry I haven't recorded the last few days. But here's what I got. 350 all this 350 boxes all ready to go for this guy so again he's supposed to be here any minute uh, I still have some more over there I didn't get to I'm gonna ask him to see if he wants more but then up here we have the truck I rented and I've been filling up. Now, originally I was gonna bring this to my new house, everything that's in here, but my mom recommended that I get a storage unit because I could, uh, you know, write off the expense. And also, I think it was a good idea because looking at it all now, I don't know how I would have fit this in my new house. You know, I could fill up the garage there, I guess, or completely fill up the basement, but it just, uh, it just would be ridiculous. So I'm gonna get a storage unit for all this. Um, and we'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's uh, manageable. And hopefully I go through this inventory quickly. Hopefully this doesn't take me 15 years to sell all this. So again, just waiting for the guy to show up now and really hope he shows up because again, my closing is tomorrow and if he doesn't come get this or doesn't take it for some reason, then I'm really, really, really screwed. Well, here they are. They are loading up their truck. They got it behind my house, which was uh, quite quite daring to begin with but they are here and 350 boxes going into that truck hopefully hopefully they all fit and hopefully they can uh, get the truck back out of here but looks like we did it 350 boxes of comics and uh, maybe more if they decide they want to take any more so here's the cash that I got the cash portion of the payment so. Nice big cash payment, and then also got the uh, got a big check. 
back around all this and to not hit that tree. And then there's like a cliff here too, right? So if you screw up, you're going over the cliff. So now the garage is basically cleared out. I still have some boxes in there, but he ended up taking 360 boxes. So if you multiply 360 times 250, assuming there's 250 in a box, that's 90,000 comics I just sold. And now it's mostly empty in here. This is the stuff I'm keeping. I have not seen this garage this empty for three years. So they all are gone now. And my comic book hoard is 360 boxes fewer. But again, I gotta get these into that truck, bring that to a storage unit. So I'm still a hoarder. I'm still a comic book hoarder, but hey, we made some progress today, didn't we? And uh, like I said, I'm gonna use that money to pay off my car. So everything worked out in the end. So one last thing, uh, I had a bunch of wizard magazines over here. I just throwing them out because, uh, you know, like they're not really worth anything. They're worth like, you know, a couple bucks. Uh, and then the shipping sucks on these cause they're so heavy. But I was just looking through them and oh look, there's a wizard number one in there. Had a $10 price tag for whatever that was, but uh, probably more like a $50 book now at least, if not more. So there you go. One last little bonus. See, and I'm just throwing away other magazines here, and then I'm looking up this thing, just because, oh, it's got Mario on the cover. Things 20 something bucks. So this is how you become a hoarder. You just like start questioning, oh, is it worth value? Because I'm just throwing away magazines and here's one that's 20, here's one that's you know at least 50. So why am I throwing away money?